Yes, what we have been doing over the last week, uh, since last week and into this week, we have been looking at the different theories that have been used to apply to Caribbean society and culture. And so for today, we're going to look at another theory, which is creolization. Now, Adam Smith, sorry, Richard Adams, in 1957, he presented a paper and he coined the concept of Creole culture. So Adams was actually studying North America and he pointed out that any culture or way of life that emerged in the new world or in the Americas uh, was actually considered to be Creole. So Adams, Richard Adams was the first person in 1957 to coin the concept of a Creole culture. And then we have Camwell Brathwaite, which is a Barbadian, Barbadian historian, poet, everything. Uh, I think Brathwaite died this year. Uh, yes, this year. And Brathwaite was also a lecturer at Uemona. So he taught at Uemona for many years. And for Brathwaite, he was very much influenced by Richard Adams' a concept of Creole culture. Now remember, Creole culture means, uh, according to Adams, anything that was created in the new world is considered to be Creole. So for example, uh, Even, for example, you could have a language as we have the different Creoles in the Caribbean. Uh, we have the mixture of Jamaican Patwa with the African that was created in the Patwa, sorry, created in the Caribbean that is considered to be Creole. Uh, same thing with the French with the African, the Haitian Creole. The, the uh, almost every single Caribbean country has a form of Creole language. So it was actually created here. Same thing with people, the mixture of people. Uh, we have uh, whites with blacks, they call them mulatto. Uh, the whites with the mess, the whites with the Indians, the East Indians, also considered to be Creole. And so these are the different phenomena mixing that he actually make reference on. And so we know for sure that Brathwaite was very much influenced by Adam's uh, concept of Creole culture. And what he's going to do is going to take things from this concept of Adam's theory and apply it to the Caribbean. And he's going to create a theory that is called creolization. Now, Brathwaite wrote the book, The Development of Creole Society in Jamaica, 1770 to 1820. And in fact, what he did was that he studied about Jamaican slave plantation. Remember, he was a historian. So he studied about Jamaican slave plantation. And he said that between 1770 and 1820, Jamaica witnessed the development of a society that 
contain blacks and white and their colored offspring. And the, according to Brathwaite, black, white with their colored offspring, which is the Creole people, created a distinctive culture within Jamaica. And so for Brathwaite, he argues and he said that the culture was neither British nor African, but rather Creole. Both whites and blacks, according to Brathwaite, in becoming Creole, right, they would have encountered several obstacles. So the whites had to face a lot of issues in terms of their own identity. Uh, the whites had to deal with the problem of being both English and Jamaican and also Creole and colonial. And so in the in this context, what Brathwaite is saying here is that Africans, both the Africans who came to the Caribbean and the whites, the white British, during this period, they had to basically shelve their, some of their Britishness and the Africans had to shelve some of their Africanness while still maintaining their Britishness and Africanness, combining that together, what left between both of them. And so what was created was a Creole, uh, a culture that was very much mixed. Uh, according to Brathwaite, he said African faced the dilemma of attempting to identify with their remembered African culture while coming to terms with their own situation as slave. So once they are in the Caribbean, Africans, they have to remember, or what they are doing is that they are trying to remember some of their African culture and retaining some of those African culture. And so these are some of the things that Brathwaite spoke about. And he said, all of this concept that he would have described is called creolization. Now, we need to remember that Brathwaite was critiquing M.G. Smith's concept of plural society. So Brathwaite was arguing and saying, listen, the Caribbean is not a plural society. There's no such thing as a plural society in the case of Jamaica. Uh, what is actually happening in the Caribbean space is a creolized, is a creolized ver version of the people where people are mixed in. Now, there are two concepts that is associated with cultural mixing, where different groups mix together. And another point I want to bring out is that when Brathwaite originally mentioned his work, uh, Brathwaite spoke about whites mixing with the blacks, blacks mixing with the whites, creating a, a Creole society. Over the years, other scholars have included other groups that arrived after that phenomena. For example, the Indian, the Chinese, all of these different groups to include them as a part of the creolization process. Now, there are two concepts uh, that are associated and very much similar when it comes to cultural mixing, to hybridization, which is a deliberate and unintentional development of new cultural forms out of integration of cultures. And creolization, which is a specific term uh, that is used to describe the fusion of ideas, beliefs, cultures, customs, and traditions, and people in the Caribbean. What I usually say to my students is that hybridization and creolization 
they are the same. Hybridization is more of a Western concept of mixing. So for North Americans and European scholars, they use the concept of hybridization where cultures tend to mix together or the syncretism of culture. So syncretism, hybridization, creolization, all of these three concepts are basically saying cultures mix. There's different groups coming together to mix, to form or integrate together to form a unique culture. However, creolization is only applied to the Caribbean because Brathwaite used this concept of creolization in application to slave plantations or the, the what was taking place in Jamaica on the slave plantation. So always remember that hybridization, syncretism, creolization, they are saying the very same. But creolization is directly linked to the Caribbean. It is our concept of speaking about our peculiar or unique form of cultural mixing. I'm not sure how unique it is, but that is the concept. Now, there are several different terms that are associated with the concept of creolization. So some of the terms include enculturation, acculturation, assimilation, and interculturation. All right, so someone I'm asking you to read enculturation for me. I'll read sure. Go ahead for me. Enculturation, a process of socialization whereby one learns and absorbs one, one's own culture or becomes part of another culture. Thank you very much, Shirley. So uh, please note the term. So within the process of pluralization, there are four terms that we need to know. Within the process of mixing cultures together, cultures being mixed together in the Caribbean to form what we consider today as a Creole culture or the Creolization, you must have enculturation taking place. And this is the process in which we, where one person absorbs the culture to become part of another culture. So it is learning someone else's culture, uh, which is actually which actually entails the concept of enculturation, right? Someone please read acculturation for me, please. Acculturation, the change is identified in a group of people as a result of the merging of cultures caused by living in a shared community over time. It usually involves the dominance of one culture over the others. In the Caribbean, it has been used specifically to distinguish the absorption of foreign cultural traits into Creole society. All right, so for acculturation, we know for sure, thank you very much, that these are different cultures within a society coming together, but every time there's a cultural mixing that is taking place, there's a dominant, one culture tend to be more dominant than the other, right? And so while enculturation is the learning of the culture, first somebody learned the other culture, the process of acculturation is knowing for sure that every time there's cultural mixing takes in place, one of the different culture will form part of the dominant culture, right? Which is 
that culture that is mixing with another culture is more dominant than the other culture that it is mixing with. Then we have the process of assimilation. Read for me, please. Assimilation. Okay, someone so please go ahead. Assimilation, the process through which a dominant culture is accepted by different groups in a society. The dominant culture is usually the result of the merging of different cultures within the society. All right, thank you very much, Elliot. So, uh, so while enculturation is one learning the other culture being absorbed into another culture, acculturation is knowing for sure that in that mixing, there's going to be a dominant culture. Assimilation is accepting the dominant culture. Accepting that, listen, this culture is more dominant than the others, right? And while inter interculturation, uh, read this for me, please, In interculturation. I'll read interculturation, the mixing of cultures between groups living together in a community or society that celebrates the interaction between individuals of different ethnicities, religions, and cultural practices. Thank you very much. So interculturation is that process also where the different groups are mixing within the society. So while you have enculturation, which is people learning uh, each other culture. So if we should look at the concept of Brathwaite, during this process of pluralization, the African learn about the European culture, the European learn about the African culture. Acculturation is recognizing that the European culture is, could be the dominant culture. We could have a debate on that to see if the African culture or the European culture is more dominant than the other. Uh, but the, the mere fact that we have, we, well, let us say the dominant culture recognizing I'm not even sure where to go with that debate, but the acculturation is recognized, well, not recognizing, but knowing for sure that the European culture is a dominant culture when the cultures are being mixed or when the culture mixed together, while assimilation is the African recognizing that the dominant culture is the European culture during the, 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 the process. So most of the elements of the Creole culture are the dominant element of the Creole culture, are things that came from the European. Or if you want to argue and say the Africans were the dominant culture, the Europeans accepting to say that, listen, we, the Africans are the, dominant culture within the society. Two ways they can debate it. And interculturation is the mixing of the different groups, right? Within the society. Now, if we want to create a Creole cake or a Creole chocolate cake, we could say that for the, if we are creating a cake in the society, well, so look at the, different ingredients in the cake as uh, different groups that arrive in the Caribbean. So we have, if you're baking a cake, you need things like eggs, chocolate, well, we're baking chocolate cake here, flour, yeast, you don't really, I'm not sure if you use yeast in a cake, butter. So these are some of the things that I'm going to use to bake my cake, right? So we could say the eggs are the European, the chocolate are the, the indigenous peoples, the flour, the Africans, the yeast, the Chinese, the butter, the Indians, right? So this sir, is- Sir, where is the sugar? Ah? Where is the sugar, <laughs> sir? 
where we could put the sugar. Maybe we could change um, yeast to sugar. Okay. Good. So we could, so we have the eggs, the chocolate, the flour, the sugar, the butter. I'm not, and you have different spices. Maybe you could use the butter with the spices for the Indians here. And so we know for sure that we are baking a cake. And so the Creole or chocolate cake, that's our cake. And so the mixing of these ingredients, uh, we actually call that process or it is the inculturation of the of these different groups, right? Or different ingredients. So the movement of the hand to form the 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 we call it now the mixture within the cake, uh, for the cake, uh, that is what we would consider to be the, the concept of interculturation, right? When you are putting all of these together to mix it. And we know for sure that interculturation is a direct result of migration. So migration is that hand, the hand that you're using to put all the different things together, right? ingredients together. Then each ingredient uh, in the cake coming together and learning from each other. So they are dissolving. So we know for sure that the butter, the, they call the chocolate, the sugar, the flour, the eggs, all of them coming together, learning from each other. And in that process of learning, they are dissolving. So we could consider that to be the eggs learning from the flour, the flour learning from the butter, the butter learning. Everybody know that, listen, we are in the same uh, dish. So we have to integrate and we have to learn from each other. There's no getting out of it, right? The historical process carries here. So we have to integrate. So that learning from each other uh, here is what we consider to be enculturation, right? While the dominance of the flower, when you're finished with everything, the dominance of the flower would be acculturation, right? So we recognize from the mixture that the flower is very dominant, uh, dominant because the egg is there, you know the butter is there, you know the chocolate is there, but everything that is keeping the entire thing together or the mixture together is that flour is very thick. And so all the different ingredients, the egg, the chocolate, the butter, the flour, the sugar, Everybody here recognizing that the dominant culture is the flower. You recognize and you say, listen, we know for sure that this is the dominant culture. And when we observe the society, we recognize that this is the dominant culture. That process is assimilation, all right? And so at the end of the day, we get our product is our Caribbean society. And so the process of, so this is the end product here, which is our chocolate cake. And so the process to create the cake is uh, the baking, well, it's baking. So we would consider it to be baking as the creolization. Now we could argue and say that the chocolate is dominant, uh, than the flour, because when you actually eat the cake, even though the, everything comes together in the cake is the, well, the flour that brings everything together, you could say for sure that when you eat the cake, you actually taste the chocolate. 
So the traffic is is dominant more than the flower. We I don't know the which side we're going to take, but we could say maybe the European is more dominant in the society, or our European cultures are more dominant than the African culture. So I hope that explains the con these concepts here, enculturation, acculturation, assimilation, and interculturation, which is part of the process of creolization. Now, there are other processes of creolization, which is actually the enculturation, the learning of each group learning from each other. And during the process of enculturation, there are three things that are taking place. When everybody is learning from each other, culture, to create that dominant culture, three things taking place. Cultural erasure, cultural retention, and cultural renewal. So in learning, cultural erasure means that some cultures are going to be erased. Cultural retention, some cultures are going to be retained. And cultural renewal is that I recognize for sure that some of my cultures have been erased. It is time for me to renew my culture. So, we, so in the process where we are learning each other culture during that process of creolization, those three things are constantly taking place. Now, cultural retention. So during the process, we have cultures that have been retained. So if we look at the indigenous peoples, we have some of the indigenous people culture that is still here. Although remember, ladies, that uh, for Brathwaite study, he studied there only with Europeans and Africans, but other scholars have included all the different migrants group that have arrived in the Caribbean, right? And so for sure, we have elements of indigenous people's culture that is still here today, retention of some of their culture. Those cultures are still retained. They still survive uh, today. And also when we talk about retention, it doesn't have to be in its original form or the, but there, it, there could be some form of uh, element of it. So if we look at maybe the cooking of barbecue, it's not the original way in which the indigenous people cook the barbecue, but the concept of barbecue is from the indigenous people. Some of the names of the places, skills, recreation, and we can continue. European, we have the same thing taking place. Not everything remains in its intact form, but or the original form, but at the end of the day, it's still, some of these cultures have been retained and the same thing for the African. So we have, for example, some of the things that have been retained, some of our cooking style, the skills, our religion, our voodoo, shango, spiritual baptist, revivalism, some festivals, jankunu, crop over, carnival, the masquerade, the different dress, the folklore, the language, quite a lot of things have been retained uh, by the Africans. And so retention, in, so when you're actually, when each other is learning from each other's culture in creating, during the process of creolization, we know that retention is actually taking place. But while at the same time, we are learning from each other, we have another concept that is called cultural erasure, which is the dying out of cultural practices uh, or some of the cultures that are, did not survive that we are not really aware of. 
And to, a part of the concept of cultural erasure is that we have created such a Creole culture in the Caribbean that we do we not even realize that some of the different words that we use or some of the different gestures that we have are African culture. We are so far removed from the from the African culture or aspects of our African culture that we are we we, we no longer recognize it. And so if we look at some of our language, uh, religion, same thing for the indigenous people, uh, our mental outlook, our psychological outlook on ourself, that black is negative, all of these different stuff would fall part of our erasure of culture. And even today in the Caribbean, you can look within your own Caribbean societies and see, it. and for sure you can look at Jamaica maybe in the 1950s or the 1960s and realize that today some of our culture have been erased. Maybe not as a result of the process of the Europeans coming, but another culture, maybe the North American culture coming into the Caribbean and erasing some of our own very much uh, Caribbean cultures here, erasing. So we have cultural erasure. And the next is cultural renewal. And this is to return or to rediscover or refreshing elements of the culture that have been forgotten, suppressed. Because in the process of cultural erasure, some of the cultures are being suppressed. For example, on the slave plantation, Africans were not permitted to speak their language, their full language. Uh, Africans were not permitted to practice their origin religion in their original form. Africans were not permitted to beat the drums. So we know for sure they also they were given European names. So for example, my name Hall, for sure, I know for sure that none of my ancestors name Hall, right? If we should go trace back to Africa, there's no such name as Hall in Africa, not an African name. And so we know for sure that they would have erased some of our culture. Some of it was deliberate, some was not. However, we know for sure that culture in we know we, well. We know for sure that in the process of renewal of our different cultures, that we have to return to that. And so we have cultures that have been forgotten, suppressed, or are simply ignored. Ignore meaning you really cannot recognize that the culture is part is part of your original culture. And so I'm going to look at two groups that have been part of the renewal process where they are rediscovering. So we have like Garifuna de in Belize, and you have the preservation of artifacts and sites of the different groups, the Taino, the Kalinagos, the Mayans, those sites. That is also part of the cultural renewal, the rediscovery the return, even at the universities in the Caribbean, the, all the different universities in the Caribbean, some of them are engaged in studies to rediscover or return to some of our cultures that have been erased during that process of creolization. And for Africans, uh, we have Creole Day in Dominica and St. Lucia, which is usually in October. And we have Garvey's in that say, listen, where is the black man's government? Where is the black man's culture? Where is his God? Where is his king? Where is his language? So Garvey's in through his UNIA was part of the process of rediscovering what Africa is. A lot of people tell us that Africa is a bad place. Africa is dark. Africa is ugly. Africa is underdeveloped. And so Garvey's in, help us to say, listen, 
Africa is a great place. Africa is not what they they this they said to us that Africa is this place that nobody live uh, comfortable or there's no development there. Garvey is saying that listen, we need to appreciate our skin color. We need to know that our skin color is gold, right? We need to recognize that we are not inferior to anybody else. We are not saying that the Europeans are inferior. All we are saying is that we are not inferior, right? So it is not a put down of anybody. It's not promoting racism because some people think that black pride is being racist. It is not. If I'm proud of myself, I'm proud of my complexion, I'm proud of my hair, right? That is not uh, racism. A lot of people say the Black Lives Matter movement in the US has been a racist movement. Going around to say Black Lives Matter and promoting Black culture is not racism. Uh, the same thing with Rastafari. They are the ones who are also part of the process of renewal. They are the ones that tell you that Mother Africa, you, when we're growing up, our parents growing up, they would tell their parents that, listen, the mother country is England or the mother country is Spain or the mother country is Europe. How Europe becomes your mother country when you're Black, your hair is nappy, nice and nappy, whether and you can't put your hair in any different style. How is it that your culture, your mother country is Europe? The Rastafari I said, listen, your mother country is not Europe. Your mother country, your motherland is Africa. And you need to look to Africa. That's your foundation. That's where you're coming from. And the same thing for the Indian. The Indians also have their form of cultural renewal where they try to say, listen, we, we come into this creolized space, our homeland, original homeland is India. And so we need to reconnect with India. Uh, Bob Marley and his, the different musicians also promote this sense of African pride and emancipation day celebrations in the Caribbean tend to promote some of our renewal when it comes to African cultures, right? And um, another thing that happens during this process is that some people say that, listen, I'm not African, I'm Jamaican. Well, for Brathwaite, Creolization, you are Jamaican, yes. It is a Jamaican culture, which is a Creole culture. And a lot of people tend to ignore their African roots. No, they don't want to associate themselves with Africa because they were brainwashed. However, during the renewal stage, you're accepting the culture that have been forgotten, suppressed, or ignored. So for example, they would say to you that your hair is nappy and it is bad hair. In the renewal process back right now, we have a lot of people wearing their African natural hair uh, in different ways and different forms. That's part of our cultural renewal where you're embracing that my hair is not nappy, my hair is not bad. My hair might be nappy, but my hair is not bad hair. All here is good here. So listen, it is part of it. Or we see people wearing a lot more African clothing or jewelry. Are people taking trips back to Africa? Are people promoting Africa on their different social media page? And one of the biggest events which recently happened was the movie, what the name of that movie? And the guy died the other day. That was a part of an African cultural reunion. Black, 
Black Panther. Black Panther was part of the process where, thank you very much, of that renewal of African culture. Everybody, even people who said that they are not African, if you ask them five years ago, they said, are you African? No, I'm not African, I'm Jamaican. Are you African? No, I'm not African, I'm Grenadian or I'm Guyanese or whatever. They, they, there's some level of denial of being African. The only country where two countries in the Caribbean where people are very, very proud to, where Afro descendants are very proud to say that they are Afro descendants is Trinidad and Ghana. Not saying it, you don't have people in other Caribbean countries that are proud, but because you have a 50% Indian, 50% Africans in Trinidad and Ghana, you tend to have people more want to recognize their African culture or showcase their African culture. But us in Jamaica, especially us in Jamaica, nationalism is, has done us a very horrible thing here that we have also tried to ignore some of our African elements in our society or say that we're African. Any comment, ladies? Do you understand the concept of creolization? All right, nobody's responding. All right, so ladies, since we are through, what I'm going to do is that the PowerPoint is there. Please, I'm asking you to go through the PowerPoint when we return in January, you're going to do some essays on creolization and social stratification. All right, enjoy the rest of the day. Okay, sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir, thank you. Okay, sir, thank you. Bye.